Hi guys, I'm Sherry Cizek. I'm making these videos trying to help teachers who are teaching crafts, three-dimensional art this fall. Somebody emailed me and said that their district is putting together or asking to put together some kind of an at-home kit. Not the end-all and be-all of everything you would need in order to take a craft class, but rather um, supplemental materials that you would have at home so that for example, my school is doing a two days in school, three days at home program, which I believe a lot of schools are doing. Um, and so it makes sense to have a certain amount of supplies at home. Just want to make sure that no district says, oh, look, this lady said this is all you need. Mm, no, not at all. This is just the start of what you might need at home if you were taking projects home to work on them. So, here we go, this is where we'll begin. I thought I would make several lists. The first is absolute. This is the bare minimum you have to have if you're working at home on some parts of your craft class. Paper and pencils, indispensable. You have to do your design work so that you come up with good ideas and you don't waste material and you follow the creative process because this is an art class and not just a make and do. Ruler, other kinds of drafting materials, of course. Scissors, uh, we'll talk about other kinds of cutting things, but the bare minimum you need is scissors, and hopefully scissors that are sharp. Uh, liquid glue, because it tends to hold better than glue sticks. Now I know that they've got some fancy glue sticks out there that are holding tighter than the old ones used to, but liquid glue just holds better and the kids just have to learn the patience to let the glue set before they move on to the next thing. Masking tape, a, a wide variety of uses for that. You need some kinds, and again this is my absolute beginning list, you need some kinds of fiber, be that yarn or grasses or cotton. Uh, in my previous video I talked about you know, making art with what is to hand. And if we're doing, you know, I've got no budget, my, my kids have no budget, then we're gonna use whatever kinds of fibers we can find at home in our environment already. Ditto with fabric. Um, I've had kids do embroidery projects on their jeans or whatever they happen to have. So in our absolute bare minimum list, any kind of fabric. Needles. Yarn needles, embroidery needles. When we were sent home, we were making yarn needles by using um, paper clips and bending them over and taping the ends so it didn't catch or twist ties from garbage bags. So yeah, you can make your own needles, but if we're making any kind of an at-home kit, you shouldn't have to, particularly you can't make embroidery or sewing needles. Pliers. Um, if you can only have one pair of pliers to do your work. You need a round nose plier that has a cutter on it. And finally, wire. And again, if, if this is our bare minimum, there is no budget, whatever kind of wire you can find. So that's, that's the very beginning place. And then let's talk about a little bit better. Let's imagine that there are a few dollars for supplies or the PTA has granted you something, or you've written an arts grant. Kudos to you if you have done that. Um, so then instead of just paper, let's have a sketchbook where we can organize our ideas in a way that makes sense and keep a record of our progress and our plans all in one place. In addition to scissors, uh, an X-Acto knife and a cutting mat so that you can do really, really um, high craftsmanship kinds of cuttings, an assortment of acrylic yarns. So maybe, you know, you'll keep an assortment in the room and as the project comes available, you know, you'll be able to allow kids to take home the colors that they need for the things that they're intending to do. Ditto with friendship cord. Friendship cord is good for, you can use it for stitchery and embroidery, for jewelry making, there's all kinds of things you can use friendship cord for, and it's it's not that expensive. If you've got any kind of a budget at all, you should certainly be able to afford an assortment of friendship cord. And same deal, 
you know, if, if you've got it in the classroom, if the kids are there sometimes, then they can, they will have the ability to create a color scheme and choose the colors that they need for the things that they're doing. I would say at least a yard of cotton fabric per student if you have the ability to purchase fabric. And you want cotton. Cotton um, tears easily along the grain, which is great, so you're not measuring and cutting all these little squares. Also, it will take the dyes if you're doing any kind of dye or if you're doing batik. Um, it's just your good all around fabric. And usually you can buy, you know, a bolt of cotton fabric for not too much money. And if we're getting to pick our wires and not just taking whatever comes to hand, I, I would have some 16 to 18 gauge wire for jewelry making some 28 to 30 gauge wire for jewelry wrapping. Um, the wire wrapping jewelry is very popular now, very beautiful. As far as the kind of wire, uh, copper wire is great for student work. It's soft, it's malleable, it's um, really easy to work with. A lot of times people who are serious about making jewelry will use copper as sort of a practice wire because it is so easy to work with. The drawback is of course that it tarnishes, or if you want, it gets a patina. But that patina can turn your finger green or wherever you're wearing your pendant can turn green. So I always advise kids to put a clear coat of nail polish on the backs of copper jewelry and see, then you're fine. And of course you can always polish it too. Um, Apart from that, you can use aluminum wire. If it's 100% aluminum, sometimes it's really too soft, too bendy for something that you want to remain permanent. You can tap it with a hammer to the more that you work wire, I don't need to tell you, you guys are teaching this, but the more you work wire, the, the more strong and brittle it becomes. And so, you know, you can toughen up your aluminum wire if you want something that's easy for the kids to work with. Um, steel wire don't, it steel tends to really hold its shape. It's not going to do a lot of scrolling and twisty design stuff. But if you wanted to get some, because it will just make, you know, a circular neck band that will hold its shape, you can do that. Um, a lot of times we use the galvanized wire, which is nice. It's a little less soft than pure aluminum but still very workable. So I would recommend that as well. And finally, we'll get to our best list, previous list plus uh, an assortment of quality yarns so that, you know, you might use the, the uh, acrylic yarns for the bulk of what you're doing, but then it's, it makes all the difference in the world to have some yarns that, that are wool, that are real organic fibers, that it, it just makes a difference. And so I would advise you to, even if you can't afford to have your whole project made in quality yarns, at least have an assortment of some, maybe limit how much the kids can take so that their projects are beautiful, so that you've got that that textile aesthetic, if you're going to put all this work into weaving something, it would make sense to have it something that you would like to keep, that it has a value. Um, an assortment of embroidery floss. It's beautiful, it costs more than the friendship cord, um, but again, it, you can see the difference, you can see the quality. An embroidery hoop, I didn't put this in before because it is possible to work on something, especially if you know, you're embroidering your jeans or some heavy fabric that's going to hold its shape anyway. You can get by without it, but again, if I was doing the best of what can be had at home, I would include an embroidery hoop. They're a couple of bucks each, which doesn't seem like much, but when you multiply that by however many students you have, it, it's an investment, especially if it's going home and we're not really sure that all the things going home are coming back several yards of cotton fabric so that once they've made um, a batik or uh, a, some kind of a dyeing project or whatever, they can make a quantity of it enough to be able to make a garment. Uh, heavier gauge wire for wire sculpture and um, 
textile printing inks. I didn't really get too much into printmaking. There's so many different directions you can go with it. And a lot of it would probably be done, you know, a lot of the drawing done at home and then the printmaking done in class. But if you, if somebody said, you know, give me your wish list, I would certainly have some textile printing inks at home because there's so much uh, fun and experimentation you can do with printmaking. And um, as long as you're doing textile inks, then you can work it into textile art as well. But that's that's what I'm thinking. That's just a start. Let me know what you think. I can you know, take this video down and put up a new new one with different kinds of ideas on it. Like I said, this is just trying to get things moving because fall will be here before you know it. And somebody asked me for this. And so I said, well, I'll take a shot at it. So that's my shot. Let me know what you think. Let me know if I've really missed stepped here somewhere or you know, I'm kind of off the top of my head, this is where I would go with this. But again, we have to take some steps forward so that we know where we're going when fall comes. And especially if people are designing kits to go home, I'm sure they're already doing purchase orders. So there you go.